it's Ashton. And it is John. What is up, Sub Sandwiches? Back again with another reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to. Sir Les. I don't know what that's. A, uh, Patterson? I know, but is it Les? Les? I don't know. Sir Les. I don't know. Um, Patterson, circa 1985, part one by the channel Ian0444. Is that I A N O four? I don't know, man. If you guys like this video, go and check out the channel. Link will be down below in the description as usual. Very important to support the channels that you love. This was a suggestion from Oil and Grease. Hi guys, could you please react to this interview with the Australian cultural ambassador to the UK? Oh snap, yes we can. You guys can also help support the channel if you want to. If you click on that link down below in the description, we're gonna let you pick on the next videos that we react to. Just keep it under ten minutes. Include the video's link, title, your email, and let's get to this video. Ladies and gentlemen. Celeste Patterson. He's the ambassador to the UK. It's like a pretty cool dude. <laughs> He's so fucking goofy looking. How are you, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> You're spilling all that stuff down your new. Is this a new suit? It's a brand new. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> Girl. It's a brand new bag of fruit I've got on, Mike. It's the very video. good to see you. I've got a new tailor. How's it? A new tailor. Yes. Yes. I don't it's... think that's us. I think that's just the video. Well, maybe it's because it's not loading. Dude, I don't know. The, this this guy right now. Dude, he had like a fucking big old boner. Like what the Do fuck? Go to the same tailor all the time. Well, I have a little bloke up there in Kowloon, <laughs> which is a suburb of Hong Kong, and I get about half a dozen a, a time. And he sends me a Christmas card once a year. That's nice, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed. And gives you a drink while he's making the suit. Dude, I know. I'm impressed by your figure. Well, of course, the first time I had this little bloke, a lovely little oriental fella, he was down on his knees with his mouth full of pins. <laughs> Looked like a shark. <laughs> and he Dude, ran me. Dude, you know who his smile reminds me of? Who? Your mom's. Seriously? Look at his smile. Yeah, tape up me inside In leg. <laughs> Might like to do that later. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Uh, he said, what side do you dress? Dress, I think. What side do you dress? I said, no worries, just make it a bit baggy round the knees. That's what I said. You with me? I, I must say this to you, Sir Les, although I don't much like drawing attention to it, but you seem a bit tired and emotional. Tonight. Well, I suffer from permanent jet lag, Mike. <laughs> In my job, you know, I'm whizzing all over the place. Bazza, you'd have the same thing. And uh, I'm constantly having to do a lot of entertaining. I'm always dipping into my slush fund. <laughs> and, uh, I have to entertain heads of state, you know, representing in so many fields. You know, the interests of my country, Australia, to which I drink this loyal toast. <laughs> I'm not tired, though. I'm very fresh, as a matter of fact. I've just been on stage in Baz's show. I'm not a welcome person there at all. He asked me to be in the show. And then he, you know, looks at me, you know, down his nose. <laughs> what brings you back to Australia, Sir Les? My roots. <laughs> I come back. Some people go overseas for their roots. <laughs> You know, up there in the Bali, all over the place. I come home for that. I do. I'm a very loyal Australian. And uh, I've got a family, a lovely family, and uh, they keep a pretty low profile. Lady Patterson. Lady Gwyneth, of course. Lady Gwen, yes, yes she is. Yes. Uh, How is she? Oh, she's a... Oh, no, I haven't heard from her lately. <laughs> oh, she's a marvellous person. You know, she's tremendously loyal and... Uh, Oh, a former model. 
What form of model? I don't know. A model for the monster from the Black Lagoon, I think. <laughs> She's not watching, I might say. She gets the news, I mean, she gets the newspapers, but they're always censored, like the newspapers in prisoner, you know? Yes. They're like a doily when she gets them. <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, will you be going to, to England in an official capacity for the royal wedding? Well, I think it's almost definitely on the cards. Uh, <laughs> I've asked for a pew near the door, in case I have to nip out on affairs of state, you understand, it's a long service. But uh, I will be going to St Paul's Abbey for this marvellous moment. I'm a Republican too, this is a... I'm a paradox, viewers. I am a Republican uh, in many ways, you know, I hold the Republican sympathies of a, uh, a socialist elder statesman and my colleague there and uh, co-religionist, I might say, Basso James. We don't see eye to eye on everything, but I have to be bipartisan. I've learned to be bipartisan as I've become a senior figure. And I'm going to be reading one of the lessons, I think, one of the Gospels. In the Abbey? In the Abbey, in St Paul's Abbey, and I, uh, I'm translating one of them into Australian. I'm going to call it the Ospel, according to Les. I haven't worked out which one, perhaps the Sermon on the Mount or one of those nice things. I'll just render it into colloquial Australian. Mm -hmm. I think it should go down sensationally well. Very impressive, yeah. Well, what about while you're over there? Do you think that uh, you might get the beckoning finger now that Charles has knocked down the Governor-General's job? I mean, you're an obvious candidate. Well, I was wondering when you were going to throw that at me, Mike. <laughs> you're the it's obvious still very candidate. Stum, you know, to use the Red Sea pedestrian expression. <laughs> but it's still, it's under wraps, this mustn't go any further, right viewers, no further. <laughs> but I'm expecting any moment to be offered the GG job. <laughs> Not that I have any, oh Charlie would be nice, but I don't know whether it's the popular choice. I think if there was a, <laughs> if there was a referendum, are you with me? Are you with me? If there was a referendum, I think the Australian public would go for the image that I project of the, you know, the senior Australian diplomat who's no been worries. around the trap. No worries. No, you <laughs> Dude, I'm having a hard Bazzard. time understanding them. Some of the stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm what's, missing a lot of the what's jokes. It, what's it like? Yeah, it's hard to understand some of the stuff he's saying because, first of all, it's very, like, um, the audio isn't the best. Yeah. And, obviously, he has an accent. To us, so. Loving the setup they gave him for that role, though. Yeah, I like it too. It is a funny video. Mm -hmm. Being such a, a, a public figure, I mean, you obviously have to watch your behaviour in, in, in public, and, and I mean, you must. Now, what about the journalists? You see, how do you deal with them? So let's, journos, journos. Well, they're difficult. You know, sometimes they get you in the gun. You know, you might have had that experience. You know, you're a big, you're a big name. You're, very, very good at your job, you're an ace, Mike. And as soon as they know that, you know, they start trying to pull the rug out from under you. No worries, we've had it in our respective fields, this little actress here. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> sorry, um... This kid just leaves you on that one. Now everybody joins in. Like a pillow inside well, of I think so. Stiff competition, you know. The <laughs> stiff competition. <laughs> the press. And I have followed the policy of slinging the journos. Slinging the journos. Sling them. <coughs> or sugar bag them. It's an old expression. If you wanted to <coughs> keep someone sweet, you'd leave a sugar bag of beer out in the back veranda. They'd nip around and get it. They'd be okay for a week or two. It's a policy in Australia. You'll find it yourself. You'll be practicing it pretty soon. <laughs> but of course, slinging the journos is sometimes a bit difficult when you're in the upper echelons of the political spectrum. You with me? Um, and I have found, as a consultant person in the arts, in the capacity of directing where the art subsidies go, which has been a big job of mine, I call, call upon, they say, look, Les, they say to me, pull yourself together, will you? <laughs> I'm not here to be sniggered at. <laughs> they say to me, Les, look, are we going to give a couple of thousand bucks to this gorilla basket weaver? Or, you know, the street puppet theatre, or what are we going to give it to? I mainly say, 
the journos, you see. You give the arts grants to the journos. Goff started it and it worked very, very well for him, no worries. Because bet your life, where there's a journo, right? You with me? In his bottom drawer, he's got a poem, hasn't he? Or a play, or a scenario. <laughs> he's got one of these things, the bottom drawer. You can sling him an art grant, you see? He'll be sweet for good. He'll be sweet for good. He'll vote for you. He'll put it in the paper. It's the new way, you know? It's the new form of sugar banking. No. Yeah. Sugar So that's... Uh, uh, that's uh, <laughs> Learning stuff every day. For the moment, uh, no, we're not finished. We're going to come back after this break, but we have a to... Break for refreshments. Break for refreshments. <laughs> I'll be in that, viewers. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. See you in a moment. Stay with us. Stay with us. Okay, so hold up. That was really good, but yeah, some of it I couldn't understand. Yeah, I lost a lot of it because the audio of it. Um, the Australian cultural ambassador to the UK. So, kind of like a UK's way of making fun of Australia through like a good, well, goofy personality of a guy who's like sunburnt and apparently has a huge dick. He wasn't sunburnt, or was he? That. The red stuff on his face. Yeah, oh, I really... thought it was bruised all over. Is that what it was supposed to be? I'm pretty sure that's sunburned. I don't... It looked like bruises. That was awesome. Look. He just comes in smoking and drinking. I mean, it could be, but it looks like he's got big bruises on... I don't know. I think it's supposed to be sunburn. There's no way, really? <laughs> Looks like he got beat the fuck up. It, does. it doesn't look like he has sunburn. <laughs> well, so it does. Creepy looking. It looks like he has sunburn, but on top of that, like he fell down the stairs or something. This is like something on my worst nightmares right here. <laughs> See, it looks like he's he is all bruised. I think it looks like sunburn, like severe. I guess it kind of looks the like pixelation. It's yeah, hard but, to tell. but it's bloody though. Like there's like, you know, like, like it dried out so much that it cracked open. <sighs> That's what I was interpreting from that, guys. We know audio is a little hard to understand. The audio was pretty hard for us, too. Um, go check out the channel that is IANO444 if you guys like that video. It's important to support the channels that you love. Kind of seems like the UK taking some shots at Australia. Did you just say por favor? Por favor? No, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, guys, like you catch you in the next video. Peace. Bye.